welcome back. I'm Caroline Best of the Delft Horsemanship, Everything Horses and More YouTube channel and video library. And today I am here with Miss Paula. Hi Paula, welcome. For those of you that don't know Paula, she's been with me for years. She's a student and she also works with me and a dear friend. And I think you all know everybody else. We've got Zor, Legend, and Sundance. So we are going to be talking to all of you about this very near and dear to my heart subject matter. Is your horse a reflection or mirror of you? The science and psychology of mirroring. Now at any time I might have to get up because we've got other horses around here like my little baby who keeps pushing on the round pen panel if you want to show them blue, obnoxious blue. <laughs> so he's rubbing on the tree right now, but that doesn't mean he's not going to want to be in here and start banging around. <clears throat> All right. So today's topic is, is your horse a reflection or mirror of you? How many of you have thought about this, read about it, heard about it? My personal experiences and observations have led me to the absolute belief that horses not only mirror us, meaning they show us who we are and how we feel, they also assist us in personal growth and development. So what you guys are observing is Zora wanting to lie down. <laughs> and wanting to covet me, as I call it, pull me in underneath. God, Smokey used to do that all the time. So we'll just wait. He's starting to fall asleep. He might go down. While there is some supportive research and science-based evidence regarding this topic, it is still very vague and generalized within the equine industry. While there may not be a lot of recorded documentation on how horses mirror humans, I think most of us have observed this. You just might not quite know, or it's happened so infrequently and you don't have the right support or education to understand what exactly is going on. It's really beautiful and magical. And certainly my students come to me because they've experienced this and they want to understand it on a much deeper level. So let me explain, because we're going to talk about the science and the psychology of this. Please understand that my knowledge is based on personal experience as a professional in the equine industry who has worked with thousands of horses and students in my time. Not to mention, I've been studying and reading mostly human psychology, but I've been an ardent student of this for a long time. So here is my understanding and research of the science and psychology behind mirroring. The science of horses mirroring relates to their need as a social species to be accepted, to feel like they belong, and cooperate within a herd dynamic. So this is a hard concept for a lot of you because you've never watched, observed, or worked with wild horses. So until you get the opportunity to observe a really healthy, oh, that gives me goosebumps, <laughs> wild herd dynamic, or even your healthy socialized herd dynamics in large herds, not just herds of three. I mean herds of at least seven. Until you get to experience that, this is gonna be hard for you to understand. And it's because you just haven't experienced it yet. So, he's smelling my hair. Oh. Again, the science of horses mirroring relates to their need as a social species to be accepted, to belong, and to cooperate within a herd dynamic. Now, humans are social species too, but the thing that gets in the way for us is our ego and our logical brain or rational, irrational brain. 
So horses don't think like that, and they don't, they're not motivated by their ego either. And so for them, getting along means safety, feeling safe, and it means safety in the wild as a herd, and it gives them the feeling of feeling secure in that. So we have a lot to learn from them, don't we? If we can just put our ego aside. Meaning when a new horse is either introduced to a new herd or wants to join a new herd, their natural instincts guide them into a passive mirroring action. By doing this, they are not perceived as a threat and will become more easily accepted, thus connect with the horse most like them. A horse that shares similar traits, behaviors, and mannerisms. This is key. This is also referred to as social engagement and social connection. This is important to all social species and especially for the horse's emotional and mental well-being. Basically, if they don't have this level of connection and acceptance, they don't feel safe or secure. And we're going to talk more about how that shows up in our domesticated horses. When a horse, this is still the science, when a horse is accepted and connected to others within the herd, their parasympathetic nervous system produces the endorphin and dopamine hormones. That's okay. I'll get it. The chemicals responsible for feeling good, you can follow me, relaxed, calm, and then also producing a healthy digestive system. It doesn't surprise me. He's frustrated. This is a frustrated two-year-old who says, I want to be included. That's why most of our stuff is in the round pen. <laughs> there we go. The Zora will take care of him. But if he does start to go after the bridle and the other stuff, I'm going to have to push him off. Or Janine. Janine's back there with the whip. Janine can handle him. Little baby. Hi guys. He's just, oh, they're playing. Oh, he's chewing on the bridle, Janine. Thank you, hon. Thank you. So Janine's just going to politely interrupt him. Ah, so nice to see you. So let's get back to that paragraph that I got so rudely interrupted. <laughs> when a horse is accepted and connected to others within the herd. This is big, you guys. Their parasympathetic nervous system produces the hormone endorphin and dopamine. And these hormones are in charge of us feeling good. These are the happy hormones, people, all social species. Um, feeling relaxed, calm, and then obviously internally our digestive system. So this is when horses feel like they can lie down and they can graze. So here's a psychology Horses as a species are naturally and instinctively hardwired to be passive by nature, non-confrontational, social and connected, empathetic and nurturing. And I know some of you are probably going to be like, what do you mean horses are passive by nature? It's pretty amazing, Caroline. It's exciting, isn't yeah, it? it's exciting. Yeah. It's just the first step. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you got something out of this and I look forward to your comments. Please ask questions. I offer these types of reflective work and my intuitive workshop workshops for horses here with my horses. And um, yeah, we'll be starting that back up hopefully in 2021. May you always be one with your horse and thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.